Well, unfortunately, the Jacksonville Jaguars did fall to the Kansas City Chiefs 27 to 17. You know, and it felt it was a game that felt like the Jaguars could really snatch early control of the game and really take control of the first half very, very early on. You know, ultimately, a perfect onside kick that Riley Patterson recovers. Fortunately, they don't get any points on that drive. Then immediately following the Kansas City Chiefs' first drive, they get the fumble recovery. Once again, no points on that drive. And it just kind of felt like that was going to be the way the Jaguar game was going to go for them this week. Two missed Riley Patterson field goals, and it was just a day the Jaguars could not get out of their own way. But nevertheless, we're here to hand out some awards for this game. and We're going to start off with offensive player of the game. You know, Christian Kirk is my honorable mention for the award for the week. Nine catches on 10 targets for 105 yards and two scores. One of them you could call it a garbage time score, but still, it was a score that put him over his career high for single season touchdowns with seven, and there's still seven more games to go for him. So could he flirt with double-digit touchdowns? It's looking very, very likely for him. And honestly, Christian Kirk had huge potential to be the offensive player of the game if he just catches that first quarter pass that he dropped, but he still was very, very productive on the day. But the offensive player of the game for me is none other than Trevor Lawrence. It wasn't a flashy stats day for Trevor Lawrence by any means, you know. But when you look at the offense as a whole, there really weren't a whole lot of uh, shining stars on it. The offensive line played terribly. Travis Etienne didn't get a whole lot going. He still had a productive day given the touches that he had. But Trevor Lawrence is my offensive player of the game, you know. Orchestrating a five-play, 61-yard drive. That gave the Jaguars their first touchdown of the game. You know, 11 seconds to go in the first half. A very quick drive for them to get down there and get in the end zone. Really finally build some semblance of momentum going into the half. And then, obviously, they did have the kickoff return uh, fumble by the Chiefs. They could have put 10 on the board, but unfortunately they don't. You know, just with those Riley Patterson missed field goals. Trevor Lawrence had a very, very good day with great decision-making. You know, there was a couple bad throws there, but he had some incredible throws when the team needed it most, and that is why he is my Week 10 Offensive Player of the Game. Now, for the defensive side of the ball, ultimately when you're going up against the Kansas City Chiefs, any day you can keep them under 30 is a very good day in my opinion. They are one of the best offenses. They have a future Hall of Fame coach. They have a future Hall of Fame tight end. They have a future Hall of Fame quarterback. All of those things are melding together are just a recipe for a disaster for any defense. And ultimately, you know, Tyson Campbell is my honorable mention for defensive player of the game. He's kind of been kind of receiving the Jalen Ramsey treatment a little bit, if you're going to follow me here. You know, you won't see him on the stat sheet a whole bunch primarily because teams are just not throwing his way. You're going to see him, you know, three targets, two targets, four targets for the entire game because he's kind of shadowing that number one wide receiver and really limiting anything that they can do. But my defensive player of the game has to be Andre Sisco. Two massive, clean hits that led to pass breakups and interception. And he was just around the ball all game long. Travis Etienne, or excuse me. But Andre Sisco absolutely was just on a burner on Sunday. He was an incredibly, incredibly impactful defensive player on a game when it didn't seem like the Jaguars had very many impactful players. So he gets it for week 10. He's starting to build himself back out of that hole. He kind of dug himself through the middle part of the season we've played so far. Played really well to start the season, went through a lull, but he is right back in the thick of it. And he's kind of trying to make a little bit of a uh, Pro Bowl push. You know, he did get his name out there with those two massive hits on uh, Juju and then uh, MVS as well. Now, let's do a little bit of stock watch, shall we? You know, I'm going to be giving players whose stock is rising and some who may have their stock fall in a little bit. For me, Brandon Sheriff had his stock plummet in this game. He was taken care of very easily, it seemed at times, by uh, Chris Jones. Yes, Chris Jones is an elite defensive tackle in the National Football League, but what was the talk all offseason about Brandon Sheriff? He is probably the best player on this Jaguars team as it sits going into the season. And it just seemed like there was impactful play after impactful play after impactful play that was coming from Chris Jones while he was being guarded by Brandon Sheriff. When you're talking about Brandon Sheriff, you're talking about an all-pro. You're talking about a pro bowler, a perennial pro bowler. And he just really, it seemed like he dropped the ball horribly this game. You know, he allowed two of the five sacks that Trevor Lawrence fell victim to. Now, I still do reside in the committee that sacks are a quarterback stat. But when you have as bad of a game as Brandon Sheriff did, it's kind of a little bit of a nod to say maybe they're not all on the quarterback. Now let's talk about something positive here. Andre Sisco, somebody's stock that's climbing 
so so high. I've already you know I've already given you the rundown on him, but he's consistently around the ball and he's making the most of his opportunities on the field. So I'm very happy to see Andre Cisco stock continuing to rise and maybe even making a late season Pro Bowl push. Now Rayshon Jenkins is someone else that absolutely has been climbing the ranks in my opinion. Absolutely been redeeming himself from his play in 2021. He had a case for being an honorable mention uh, for defensive player of the game. Ultimately, I did give it to Tyson Campbell, but he had the massive forced fumble in the first half that you know gave that second stolen possession right away for the Jaguars going into the first half. Now, unfortunately, uh, no big impactful plays outside of that. Maybe I should have given it to him. I don't know. I'm going to talk myself into it as the video goes, but... The Jaguars currently sit at three and seven, third place in the AFC South. You know, is there a chance? Yes, they're still mathematically alive, but do they need the Tennessee Titans to absolutely explode and the Jaguars to get white hot through just a murderer's row that they're still currently in? You know, because you're onto the fierce opponent known as the bye week, but you can't lose to the bye week, but you can absolutely lose to their um, week 12 opponent led by former MVP Lamar Jackson. You know, there's always a light at the end of the tunnel. But sometimes that light is just the train coming to hit you. I end with that great positive note. Thank you guys so much for watching. On to the bye week. Got a couple great videos coming up with some collabs, hopefully with some guys. Stay tuned, stay safe, and go Jaguars. Let's go, J JJs. Let's go.